We see uh, Severine here about to slip into one of her uh, extraordinary guilty fantasies. When she has a fantasy, she really goes to town on it, and there's something ready-made and a little tacky about these uh, these fantasies of guilt, as if uh, as if uh, she were she'd got them from a not very good magazine. And uh, uh, we're about to see uh, a reconstruction, a kind of comic reconstruction of a famous painting, the the Angelus by Jean-François uh, Millet. In a moment, the two men will assume the postures of the two characters in the Angelus, uh, drawing up uh, for us, uh, conjuring up for us an image of, and just now, there it is, and conjuring up for us an image of Severine's imagination is full of, of religious imagery, uh, the two uh, peasants in the fields waiting for the evening prayer, uh, bowing their heads in... Uh, bowing their heads in modesty and in piety uh, while she is having mud uh, slung at her by these two men in some uh, horrible way, quite quite enjoying it. We might add that the, the crowd of bulls are, are, are not are nothing subtle about what the bulls are. They're all called remorse, uh, except for one uh, that is called uh, expiation. No one's ever going to accuse Bunuel of being a feminist. No one's ever going to say, ah, yes, the great feminist film, Belle de Jour, and yet it is a movie of great interest to feminists who study imagery and sexuality. It always has been and always will, because you have a female protagonist whose sexuality is at the center of the movie, and in fact, she gets to live out all kinds of outrageous behavior she breaks every rule that she's been brought up with, and at the end, she doesn't get punished for it. That's really the best part of all. She seems to have gotten away with murder, only in the case of a woman's life, she has gotten away with sexual pleasure, which is, you know, that's like murder, isn't it? <laughs> Dans le plus grand secret, Louise Bunuel réalise actuellement Belle de Jour. Nous avons rencontré Jean-Claude Carrière, son scénariste, ainsi que son interprète principal, Catherine Deneuve. Et est-ce que ça vous a été difficile de rentrer dans le personnage de cette femme euh, Oui, pour certaines scènes, parce que je suis assez, assez renfermée. De toute façon, c'est déjà pas une qualité à avoir pour une comédienne. Et il y avait des scènes qui m'ont gênée, des scènes qui étaient difficiles. Dans la maison de rendez-vous, des choses, à... certaines scènes un peu pas vulgaires, mais enfin difficiles. Et vous mais avez ben... l'impression que vous vous en êtes sorti Je sais pas parce que j'ai pas le droit de voir les projections. Bunel ne veut pas que les comédiens voient les projections. Il dit et c'est un petit peu vrai d'ailleurs. On se regarde plus qu'on regarde une scène ou... ou une chose générale. Enfin, on regarde surtout sa... son physique, la lumière, comment on a joué, et on se laisse souvent euh, abattre impressionné défavorablement, alors il nous interdit tout simplement de voir les projections. We try to select the daydreams and the imagination that would go with in that same direction. All the daydreams in the film has been told to us by women. We would never dare of inventing women eroticism. The more we went, the more we realized that what, what is called the reality in the film, which means the, a relation with her husband, friends, you know, all this sort of social life, was totally artificial in, in the novel. And, and we wanted to keep it artificial in the film. The only reality in the film is in the dead winds. You know, it's like going upside down with reality and imagination. What looks real is false. 